Hi class, welcome to the next video in the pre-calculus series. Today we're going to talk about average rate of change of a function. So this is very, very, very closely related to the slope of a line. However, if you've noticed in the last videos, functions are rarely a line, right? Um, I mean, they can be a lot, but it really just depends, right? There's a lot more things out there than just lines or linear equations, linear functions. So there's lots of different things that we have to watch out for. Um, so let's talk about that. Okay. So <clears throat> recall that the slope of a line is given by M and it's the difference in the outputs over the difference in the inputs, right? For us, we're talking about the change in the vertical over the change of the horizontal because we weren't talking about inputs and outputs yet, right? Now that we have functions, we can talk about that in the sense of input and output, okay? So here for a slope, when we talked about slope, the change in the heights over the change of the horizontal was given because we had the points P0 and P1, okay? If we change P0 into our function notation, remember it's now x and f of x, I have an input of x0 and an output of f of x0. Same thing with um, my x1, y1, I can call that x1 and f of x1 now. Okay, so now it's really in terms of an input and an output. So changing this y1 minus y0 into our new function notation is the output of uh, x1 minus the output of x0 over x1 minus x0. All right. So again, very, very similar. However, we've just changed it to function notation. And again, this is nice because generally our functions are not lines. They're not linear functions. Okay. However, when our functions are not linear, this represents what's called a secant line. So a secant line is a line that connects two points of a curve, okay? Remember that later when we get into our trick stuff, right? So a line passing through two points of a curve. We do talk about the secant line as well in calculus, okay? So this comes up very often in calculus one. So let's say I have a function. Okay, just a very standard parabola. If I let this be x0, okay, then this point has an output of f of x0. If I have a second point somewhere, x1, its output is f of x1. And if I connect these two points with the line, then the slope of that line, oops, is f of x1 minus f of x2 over x1 minus x0. Okay, so that's what this represents. It's the slope right? It's the rate of change from here to here of my function. Although I don't want to say of my function because my function is changing a lot, right? Here it's going up and here it's going down. It's increasing and decreasing over this interval. Remember, this is just going to give me a single value, okay? So the single value that this represents is the slope of the line connecting the two, okay? Not necessarily the rate of change from here to here of my function because my function is changing all different kinds of ways, right? That's really the focus of uh, calculus one, okay? So right now we're just gonna stick to what we're calling the average rate of change. The slope of this line is how this function is changing on average from x naught to x1. So again, it's increasing and decreasing. So the slope of the secant line talks about the average rate of change from here to here, okay? So we can do that with a single value. So the numerator, f of x1 minus f of x0, that's called the net change. The net change is just the difference from here to here. So the up and down. It's basically like my y1 minus y0. It's the change in height of my function. So at this point, I had this as an output. At this point, I have this as an output. What's the change in outputs? f of x1 minus f of x0. Okay. So it's the total change in height of my function from both of my over both of my inputs, right? So here with another graph, this is x naught, f of x naught, x one, f of x one. So this distance here is the net change, okay? Because my function has gone all the way up to here, right? But if this is where I start and this is where I end up, then from this point to this point, this is how much I've changed in height, right? I started at this height and I ended at this height. So this value minus this value 
that's how much I've changed in height overall throughout my function from here to here. Okay. So again, since linear functions are line, are lines, their average rate of change is the slope of the line. Okay. So example, let's say that a let me rephrase this, okay? The slope of the line is equal to the rate of change of a function. Since this is not a line, since it changes a lot, right? Increases, decreases, there's all kinds of things, and the rate of increase and decrease also changes from here to here. We have to talk about the average rate of change. But for a linear function, its average rate of change is its slope because it's increasing at a state or decreasing at a steady pace. Okay. So with that to the side, let's do an example where we talk about average rate of change. Okay. So let's say that there's a rock being thrown off of a hundred foot cliff. The person who throws the rock is six feet tall. Okay. The rock reaches a maximum height of 30 feet above the cliff when it is 20 feet from where it is thrown. And it lands in the water below the cliff 70 feet from where it was thrown. So again, here we have an application problem. I read it once slowly. I'm probably going to have to read it one more time just to make sense of everything that I said, right? So again, um, there's uh, some... Oh, it wants to find the average change in the height of the rock from 10 feet from where it was thrown to 50 feet from where it was thrown. Okay. So there's some dude on a cliff or dudette. Okay. The cliff is 100 feet tall. The person is 6 feet tall. The maximum height that the rock goes is 30 feet taller than this 100 feet foot cliff. And that happens 20 feet out, right? So the person throws the rock. 20 feet from where he throws it, it's at a height of 30 feet above this 100 foot cliff. Okay. After that, it 70 feet from there, okay, from where it's thrown in the water, below the cliff, 70 feet from where it's thrown. So 70 feet out is when it hits the water, and that's 100 feet down, right? So we want to find the average change in the height of the rock that was thrown from 10 feet from where he threw it to 50 feet from where they threw it, okay? So there's a lot going on here. So just like I said, you read it a couple times, let's draw a picture and then start to label stuff, right? So I have a cliff. There's some water on the bottom of this cliff. There is a person on top of this cliff throwing a rock. Boom, okay? He's throwing a rock, rock, it's landing in the water. There's that person throwing the rock. Okay, so notice that the rock leaves their hand at the top of the throw. Okay, so the point where this is leaving their hand is at zero, because that's where the person is, but it's a height of 106, 100 feet of the cliff, and then the six feet that the person is. This point where it hits the water is 70 feet away from the edge of the cliff. Okay, please don't stand on edges of cliffs, you guys. Okay. The high point of this is 20 feet away, okay, and it is 30 feet above the cliff. So that's height of 130. Okay, so what do I have next is I need to find the average change in the height of the rock from 10 feet to 30 feet from where it was thrown. So I have a decent representation of what's going on here. Okay, I got a 100 foot cliff, even though I didn't mark it as 100 feet, that's fine, I know it's 100. This person is 6 feet tall, I'm assuming that that's where the ball is left. If you kind of do a throwing motion right now, you'll notice that if you were to throw a ball, if you've ever thrown a ball, you generally let go right about the height of your eyeball or your nose if you need it to go forward. So we're just going to assume that's about 6 feet, okay. We know that the high point is 20 feet away from this person and 30 feet higher than the height of the cliff. So that makes sense to me that this would be 20, 130. And the zero would be 70 feet away where it hits the water. Okay, so that's what I am assuming at this point. The points of interest to me are this value here, which is halfway between zero and 20. So this should be about a value of 10 okay then I need a value between 20 and 70 
So 50 feet away should be somewhere out here, okay? So this should be 50 feet out the horizontal. I want to know what is the average rate of change from here to here. So I know what the horizontal distance is. The horizontal distance is from 10 to uh, 50. So that's a distance of 40. But what about the change in height? Okay, what's that net change? Once I find that net change, I can divide that by the horizontal change. And then I have the average change in height over this distance. Okay, now in order for me to find that stuff, right, these unknowns, I know the inputs, but I don't know the outputs. So I need to use math, okay? So I need to use the information that I have to find a model for this quadratic, okay? Because it's a parabola, right? Anything, anytime you have projectile motion, that's a quadratic function. So I need to use the information I know. I have a zero. I have, this would be considered a y-intercept, and I have a maximum and a minimum value, okay? I need to use that information to find the equation of my quadratic. And once I have that info, then I can plug in 10 and I can plug in 50 and I can find those outputs and then find my rate of change. Okay, boom, that's what I'm looking for, the slope of this line. So we have some missing values. So again, I really can't do anything until I have the formula for my model or the equation for my model. After this, I can use the inputs that I have to find the outputs to find my average rate of change, okay? So let's use some information we know about quadratics. The halfway point is where the maximum and min or, or minimum lies. Um, I also know that there is a zero at x equals 70. So I can actually use that information to find the other x-intercept, okay? So half the distance, all right? So half the distance from the center to one end is the length of 50, right? So from, let's come back here, from 20 to 70 is where one of the zeros is. So that means if I move 50 in this direction, I should find what the other zero is. Okay, that's very helpful to me. Okay. So that would be at x equals negative 30. So this is just one way for me to find the equation. There's actually quite a few ways for me to figure this out. So this is the way that I'm going right now. I know my general form will be some constant multiple of x minus 70 times x plus 30, right? So a 0 of 30 and a 0 of 70. And obviously my graph is uh, concave down, right? So that means my function should be negative because it doesn't face upwards. It's a, it's a sad face and not a smiley face, right? So we'll use that information to try to find what this A value is. It's actually very easy. I can just take one of these points that I do know. I wouldn't use one of my uh, x-intercepts. I can use my max and min value and plug this in to solve for A because then I know an x value and I know an output value. And the only thing I wouldn't know is A. Something even easier than that, though, would be to use the zero value, because then I don't have to do any actual math, right? I can just say negative 70 times 30 times A is 106, solve for A. So I already did that, so let's go ahead and do that, okay? Zero is my X, 106 is my uh, Y, or my F of X, okay? 30 times negative 70 is negative 210, okay? Or if I'm lazy and I don't want to do any math, I can just move all my stuff around and simplify it later, okay? So for instance, I know that this is an even, so I can just divide one of these two by two also and reduce this to 53, okay? So 53 over 105, it's negative. That's my value of A. So my function is given by this. I could multiply it all out and expand it, but I don't really need to do all that because that's not the purpose. I just need a function in order to solve some stuff. So I could use it as it is. I don't need it in standard uh, polynomial form. It's not going to be super helpful for me. Okay. The points that I need to know though are 10 and 50. So I'll just plug in 10, figure out the value I get out, plug in 50, figure get the value I need out, and then I can finish my problem. Okay. So again, I don't need to do a bunch of extra stuff. I just need the function to be functional for me. Plug in 10, I got negative 53 over 105, 
this will be 40, this will be negative 60, okay? Um, I can try to cancel out the 5 with maybe the 60 because it's the largest thing, but notice that the two negatives will cancel out also. And I'll actually end up with 8, 84, 80 over 7. Now you might say, well, what is the actual value of this? What is the height? I don't really care. It's 100 and something. I don't really need it, okay? Um, if I put the exact value, I'll have some decimal approximation form. And then if I do the same thing for f of 50, I'll get some other decimal approximation where I had to cut off some values. And then my answer is not going to be exact, okay? So I'm going to keep everything as exact as possible until the very, very end. So same thing, let's plug in 50, negative 53 over 105, this will be 80, this will be minus 20, okay, easy peasy. Let's cut this down to 40, divide this by 5, right, we end up with 21, okay. So we got 16,960 over 21, again, I don't really care how much this is, it's a little less than 100. I don't care what the actual value is. All I need is it to do some math on, right? Exact values are better. So I will plug that in, right? I plug in um, the 50, I plug in the 10, and over that I subtract 50 minus 10, right? So this is f of 50, this is f of 10. I do what math I need to. I need to make a common denominator, so I multiply this top and bottom by three. Then I can combine that. I know 50 minus 10 is 40. Multiply by the reciprocal, okay? 84, 80, and the 40 will cancel pretty nicely. And I get out negative 212 over 21. I don't need this as a decimal form, okay? Because the application of this isn't super important to me, right? But basically, whatever this is, it's a little bit more than 10, right? So 10 point something. Um, I decrease on average 10 point something feet per second. Okay, that's what this would be in a decimal form. That's the application, right? Thanks, guys. See you on the next video.